It's time to set up February 2023 in my bullet journal, and this month we're going to take a little trip to Paris. Hey y'all, welcome back to Dots and Beyond. My name is Beth, and today we are going to set up my February bullet journal with a Letters from Paris theme, which is one of my playlists. This particular playlist is a little bit French, a little bit English, a little bit new, a little bit old. Sort of one of those playlists that I envision myself wandering through the streets of Paris listening to. As usual, I have started out with pretty much everything sketched in so that I know where everything is supposed to go. Now, it was about this time last year when I actually conjured up this music and lyrics idea and I knew immediately I wanted to do this theme for February. And if you see this stuff up in the corner and you watched my unboxing from Stationery Pal, you might know that I probably wanted to take this in a completely different direction. But after setting up January in a much more minimal for me style, and I really wanted to keep that. So I decided to scale things back and not use all of the ephemera and stickers and washi tape that I really thought I would use for this setup because I didn't think I could keep the style reined in and it was going to get a little busy and out of control. And so I defaulted back to my good friend, the stencil. And oddly enough, I have these Paris stencils, which I purchased probably two or three years ago and have never used. For the color palette, I am keeping things very muted with a very light rose colors of the world Crayola, as well as this dusty rose colored pen that came in the December sub box from Archer and Olive. And then the Pigma Microns that I am using are a cool gray. I do add in a dot marker as well as we go along, so all of these will be linked in the description box below. And then to top things off, I'm going to do some stamping as well. But let's go ahead and get started with this stencil. For this, I am just gonna borrow this Eiffel Tower here out of the word Paris. It sort of has this outline style that is loopy of the Eiffel Tower. And I try to recreate this sort of loopy style with some other landmarks as we go through the setup without having any kind of a stencil to to go on. Not only did this stencil have the Paris postal mark, but it also has a large stamp shape. Sometimes I do use this vertically like a stamp and other times like this, I'm using it in a landscape version to use more like a frame. And I am going to be putting a quote on this left page. Y'all know I love a good quote. And I had this very large fleur-de-lis stencil that I can use for that purpose. And then I'm adding a little bit of the color, starting off with the very light rose with the colors of the world marker, just going over some areas one or two times if I wanted them a little bit darker or a little bit lighter. And that's when I decided that all pink all the time was going to be a little too much. So I also introduced the light gray Tombow, my favorite in 95, to fill in some of the areas in gray instead of pink. Inside the stamp shape is the title of our playlist, Letters from Paris. And then I will fill out the rest of this lyric, which is from Sous le ciel de Paris, which reads, Under the sky of Paris, a song flies away. It was born today in a young man's heart under the sky of Paris. And here are the first of the stamps. These are all corner flourishes that I am going to stamp on just using that small gray stamp pad up in the top right corner. And the stamps just add a lot of texture and fill in some white space without me having to do a lot of intricate work. My stamp collection is still relatively small. I have been very purposeful in the ones that I have purchased, hoping that I can use them again and again. And that will wrap up this very simple and very soft Letters from Paris cover page. Moving on to the calendar page where you can see I have our straight lines already sketched out. I've also used some stencils on this page, most notably in this top left corner. I'm not gonna get the stencils back out pretty much for the rest of this setup. I'm just gonna trace over the lines that I had already penciled in. During the cover page, I mentioned I was going to use the style of that Eiffel Tower stencil to do some additional monuments from Paris. And on this page, in this long skinny section, I'm going to do the Luxor obelisk. Now, if this monument seems like it is out of both place and time, it is. It is an original obelisk from the Luxor temple in Egypt. It's one of a pair that was gifted to France by Pasha Muhammad Ali and erected in the Place de la Concorde in 1833. Now, I am neither French nor Egyptian, but I am a big proponent for Western civilizations returning cultural icons to the countries of which they originated. 
especially in this case where the pair to this obelisk is still standing outside the Luxor temple and it's missing its mate. Here again, I am using that same light pink to color in all of the things that we have already outlined. And then I will also use it to highlight the headers for each day of the week. At the top, I am putting in another song lyric, this one by Madeleine Peru that reads, when you want to sing, we sing. When we want to dance, we dance. You can do your bedding. We're getting some fun out of life. I then brought in that light gray Tombow again to highlight the top of each daily box before using the Dusty Rose pen to fill in each one of those days. And of course, I'm sticking in a few stamps just to fill out some of those empty spots as well as the daily headers. And that is it for the calendar page for February 2023. Moving on and we're going to set up the dashboard for February 2023, which really is just a whole page of lists of projects that keep me on task. I have gone ahead and stamped in the header as well as used a stamp that has the pen nibs of a calligraphy pen. I used that particular set in my reading journal setup, my Edgar Allan Poe reading journal setup, but I will also link it in the description box below. For the art on this page, I'm tracing out a stencil I had already put down on the page that read Café du Paris, and then I sketched out a simple cafe table and chairs in that same open loop style like I am recreating a stencil. To do this, I really thought of each sketch as a line drawing, but instead of one line, there were two, and they were just closed together by a little loop at the end. And then I'm going to use the pink and gray to color these in again, pink on the Café de Paris and gray on the table and chairs. And then I'm going to use the same sort of pink and gray setup for my headers, alternating them, pink for one, gray for the other. For the headers themselves, I'm just going to use my natural cursive. Those headers are Dots and Beyond, Blog, Home, Freelance, Side Quests, and the Monthly To Do. And then while I was doing the setup, I decided I did want those to have bullet points. So I took out one of my dot markers and it is in gray and used those to make those bullet points. I did think about trying to put something up here in this empty area next to dashboard, but decided I was just gonna leave it alone and we would move on to the next spread. There would have been a time that I would have really pondered that for much longer, but not this year. We are just gonna go ahead and move on. As you can see by the header, this is going to be my wellness page and I am mostly gonna set this one up just like I did for January. I'm pondering some changes to it, but for now we're going to stick with what worked. For the Paris Monument on this page, I chose the Pont Neuf Bridge, which is the oldest standing bridge over the River Seine. It was completed in 1607, and I really chose this because of its shape and that it would fit across the bottom of the page, leaving me room for the wellness trackers on the top right third. For the habit tracker, I put in medications, journaling, filling out the eMoods tracker, more on that in an upcoming video, and then brushing my teeth and doing skincare. And then at the top, I also left room for my bar graph trackers or line graph trackers for mood, steps, and sleep. And this month I'm adding in water to that as well. Across the middle, I have not only the days of the month, but I also have whether it's Monday through Sunday. And then I've also added in the week numbers as well. And here I just decided I wanted a little extra space between the first row and the actual date headers themselves and made a little correction. And I still needed a little bit of letter iconography to match the letters from Paris theme. To see this tracker in action, we are gonna flip over to the current month of January so you can see how I'm filling it out. And as you can see, I'm filming this video pretty early on in the month, but here at the bottom, I'm using the dot marker to fill in my habits. At the top, I am using a line graph for those specific things. It is a scale of one to 10. I just didn't write one to 10 in that top section. I have a middle line indicating where five is just to give me a little bit of reference. Moving on, we are going to go ahead and set up the daily log for the first week of February. And as you can see, I already have a little bit of a header in place. I am going to do my weekly and daily logging a little bit different than I set up for January. I'm actually going to create a Dutch door on this page and use two spreads for every week. First up though, I am creating a mini calendar here on the left. Y'all know I like to have a mini calendar to reference through the course of the week. I did frame it out with that same stamp stencil, just putting it on a little bit of an angle. For the Dutch door, I am cutting this 
perfectly in half so this is at the 13 dot mark and rounding off those corners just to make it look like it's intentional and part of the journal. On the right side I will have a weekly to-do list and then the rest of the space in the middle sections is definitely for daily logging. I will probably put some sort of zone cleaning thing here underneath my mini calendar. I created a whole page for that in the January setup on the left for routines as well as zone cleaning. Decided I really don't want that much in my journal. It was a little intimidating. So I'll probably put in a little something here below the stamp, but I haven't quite figured out what that will be yet. Finishing off the spread is a couple of those corner flourishes down on the bottom, really just to anchor that and give your eye something to look at on the bottom of the page as well. And then I wrote in the daily header of Monday for that first week with my go-to pen, the Sharpie S gel. Even though it's black, not gray, I'm definitely not gonna change my go-to pen or daily writing pen for that purpose. And if you would like to see what my daily logging looks like, here is the first week of January. It is very rough and here's that left page where I had all of that cleaning stuff that I want to pare down and put in this section, make it not quite as complicated. Because I share my bullet journal on the internet, I used to be very pressured or feel very pressured to do this daily logging in an aesthetically pleasing style. I decided that pressure I was putting on myself and that nobody else really cared and so I have gone to doing just that free flow daily logging and here I've left enough pages for me to do the rest of the weeks for February as well. And then I did sneak in one more stamp here between week six and my to-do list, a little first class stamp just to fill in that gap before moving on to my final spread which will be my playlist and my recap spread. For the February recap, I wanted to split this into four sections, two of them with stamped headers and then two of them with cursive headers. So I went ahead and pre-stamped in tunes and world and now I am writing in favorites and reflections. And then under reflections, I'm breaking that down into the four L's, liked, learned, lacked, and longed for. I'm not sure where the four L's originated. I have seen them in several different setups and things, but it is a great way to remember four things that you want to reflect on for a month or even a year. And then I decided to use this border stamp to create a border down two of the different sections for world as well as tunes because it already has this little diamond spot that sticks out that kind of acts like an individual bullet point. For the art on this page, I did outline a stencil that has sort of this faux letter handwriting sort of style on it. And then again, when it came to the monuments, I created my own and this time I used the Arc de Triomphe. The Arc de Triomphe is settled at one end of the Champs-Élysées in Paris and it is there to commemorate those who died in the French Revolution as well as the Napoleonic Wars. It was inaugurated in 1836 by King Louis-Philippe. Don't forget to peruse my Letters from Paris playlist either on Spotify or YouTube Music. Both links will be in the description box below and suggest any songs that I can add to this tune page. And that will wrap up my end of month reflections page and we are ready to flip back for the flip through. While it is not the maximalist scrapbook style letters from Paris setup I originally envisioned, I do like this and how simple and clean it is. Even with the pink, which is not my normal aesthetic and one that I've done now for both December and February. Even with sketching in the monuments, I have regained a lot of my time and simplifying my bullet journal setups for this year. Not so much with those for my son's bullet journal for Kenny. His are still a little bit more complicated, but that is just A-OK. -okay. And you're gonna love the setup that he has chosen for February. That video is coming next week. And it looks like the playlist that I will be doing for March is going to be Retro Roller Rink as voted on by you. Now let's go ahead and choose what my bullet journal setup setup is going to be for April. So let's look at those three options that you have to choose from. The first is New York City Meet Cute, which was recommended by one of our watchers. And it really is just a playlist of pretty much every rom-com ever set in New York City. Second, we have bookstore Velacor. Velacor is a whimsical word to describe the feeling of a used bookstore. And last but not least, we have The Seven Vices, which is based on The Seven Deadly Sins, a very genre fluid playlist inspired by Buckcherry's Confessions. Each playlist is linked below if you want to check out their particular vibes and you can head over to the community tab to learn more about each one and vote right now. While you're down in the description box, please take the time to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next one.